Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. All Quiet on the Western Front, movie, thoughts, 1979. I quite like the ending of this. I, I do find it superior to that of the original. I won't spoil what, uh, what it's like in the original in this video. Right from when, you know, when Paul goes back and meets back up with Kat. And, you know, we have... The, the ending has two long tracking shots. You know, with no cuts. First we have Kat and Paul talking about how the war is almost over. And basically the Germans have nothing left. They can't, they can't continue fighting. And all the while we have these distant explosions. And while there have been so many other scenes in the film where an explosion was cause for ducking, for taking cover, or it was a horrible thing to you know, it, it was that they are now used to it. You know, I mean, Kat has been for a while, but Paul, Paul is also used to it with, with very little reaction. And, you know, it's, it, you can just, you can tell how jaded they are at this point. They just, they can't give a huge reaction every single time. They just, they, they, there's only so much that the human psyche can handle. So they, they just, they don't respond because that explosion wasn't that close to me. So I, I'm, I'm still here, I, I just have to keep moving, you know. And then suddenly, suddenly there's one close to them. And Kat is talking about how the war's almost over. Why, why could it, just, just a little bit longer, but no, no. He's hit, and he tries to walk, he can't, so Paul has to carry him. And what I really love about this sequence is that we don't know, you know, you, you can piece it together afterwards, but you don't know that he's dead when he's being carried. And he isn't at first, you know, he, he continues talking a little bit, but then there's another explosion, a couple of horses pass by, that explosion, some of the shrapnel must have hit him, you know, and, and you find out, you know, you, you see blood on Paul's hand when he, you know, he, he reaches to lift Kat's head up, and when he takes back his hand, you know, the, the moment that he touches his head, he realizes it. We don't know exactly at that time what it is, but then he pulls back his hand, and we see the blood, and we just know, and, and, and you didn't know he, and, and there's that fantastic line but he was talking to me ten minutes ago. And that right there is that that is that is life or death. That is that is war, especially modern war, summed up perfectly. You know, that just but he was just alive. I literally it it was moments ago. It it just and then it, it continues into the letter to Albert, which ends with the conclusion that Albert, you and I are the last two left alive. We 10% we of the original class are all that's left alive and sane. One more is alive, but not, but, but he's insane. And 
just the you know the the letter in, in general the the I believe the dettering is the is the name the um, the farmer who just wanted to go back for to to take care of you know the the harvest I I will admit that that character that the the sort of motivation is is dealt with slightly better in the original but but yeah you, and you see this you know sort of yeah the flashback basically to him you know going going just going nuts over this this blossoming tree i th i think and yeah and and that was it you know he he deserted and they know what happened to him and the 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 letter to albert pronouncing that they are the last two alive makes it all the more tragic that Paul is dead within minutes of having written the letter and for all we know Albert is already dead or at least will die before ever receiving well I suppose the letter isn't even sent but and then you have another tracking shot we have Paul passing the, the soldiers checking their equipment, making sure that they're all ready, and suddenly he hears a bird, and there's this beautiful, unforgettable image of just this this one. You basically have the horizon, this this empty sky, this this empty earth, this war-torn milieu. And then you have this one branch, no leaves, nothing, just the, the, one, the one sign of nature enduring, the one sign of, of life, of beauty. This, this bird singing and, and Paul, for the second time in the movie, draws, draws a bird. And this is also something that makes this the, the ending so much more impactful, is that it was established from from the first time the, the first time we see Paul, he is drawing bird. We we know that in in both versions he's spoken of as an artist basically, and but but in, the, in this it's you know, it really establishes early on that he has an interest in this and. For my money, the interest in this is more beautiful and more inspiring. I don't know, maybe it's a personal taste thing. Anyway, he draws this bird, and at first it's going fine, you know, but, but for just a second he forgets where he is, for just one second. And he, he gets up to, to get a better view of the bird, because he... He, he draws in detail as we find out the first, we find out the first time we see him. He he loves this beautiful nature and he wants to capture it in as much detail as he can. So he gets up for just a second and that's that's enough. And we hear the shot ring out and we don't see him hit, but we do see what was in the process of becoming a detailed depiction of the beauty of nature, of the beauty of life, be curled up in the sudden grip of someone dying, the, the final spasms of movement. That's the first thing that happens to the drawing, and the next is that it falls into the mud. And again, it's it's a perfect image of the war. This this was the one The one thing left, the one, the, the beauty, the life, nature, 
It was all that was left. It was the one final expression of that. And it's crushed within seconds, with, with just, with no effort. And then the, the title with the, the communique to the German High Command. All quiet on the Western Front. No, nothing to see here. This, this was nothing. There's, there's nothing of note here. I quite liked the, or like, I, another great aspect was the way when, I'm, I'm terrible with the names, but, so I'm not even going to bother, I'm not going to try because I'll just mess it up, but the, the one who loses his leg, who has his leg amputated, This, you know, when, when we find that his leg has been hit, we get a flashback to him in school. And with, with a few seconds, we realize that he is an accomplished gymnast. He, he was great, and he was in great shape, and he loved doing it. And that just makes it all the more tragic and sad. Even even if he had survived, which he of course doesn't, even if he had, it would... it, it would have taken that away from him. You know, as, as with the, the, the one later who, who asks, bring me a gun, you know, who, who has also had, I believe it's also a leg, amputated, you know, just... and it's it's just completely he's he's that depressed one thing that i find this does really well at that i wish had been in the original as well is when paul goes to talk to i believe kimerick kimerick's mother. The, the courage it must take to, to tell her that her son is dead. And the, the accusation of her, which, which is, of course, understandable, because she, she just found out that she lost, you know, her, her beloved son, and in front of her is indeed, as she herself puts it, sitting someone else who could easily have been the one to die. And it's it's not an inhuman thing to, you know, she... It's awful for Paul to hear it, but it's also also an awful situation for her to be in. And it's it's a very very powerful scene, and I find that just the very, the very fact that the very first line of it is you're lying to me, Paul. It doesn't ease into it, it doesn't at, at first we don't even know exactly what wh who it is or what's going on, but it just, it really sets the tone perfectly. You, you just realize immediately this is another bad situation. This is, this is not where Paul wants to be. This is not something that... The bunker scene in this is admittedly not as good as that of the original. Which is not to say that it's it's bad in this, but it it is better than the original. I like that this one gets into the 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 mustard gas and the the horrors thereof, and. The, the, the details 
which, as, as I say in the review, they, they deal with a narration because you, not everything can be shown or, can, or, or would have the same effect. And the, the, the narration about how the, the newcomers are dropping like flies because they don't know enough. And we see one succumb to the mustard gas. Just, uh, he's, he's not careful enough. And it's just devastating to, to witness. When Paul is trapped with the dying Frenchman that he that he must stab, the detail of him washing the blood off, something that he didn't really have to do. You know, he, he was forced to stay there. He he could have waited with the blood, but he didn't want to. He he felt bad. It it was sort of it, it was the literal blood on your hands kind of thing and and he feels bad and it is that moments change it from one moment to another this other person goes from being my enemy to you could have been my you you could be my brother if it wasn't for, you know if if it wasn't for these guns and these grenades and the you know, this, this realization and the, the comment that they don't want us to know that is really powerful. This is actually one of the scenes where there's, there's something incredibly good in both versions, and it's a different thing in each version. I thought that the... You know, seeing Paul with his, both his mother and his father. I, I feel that this one does a better job of conveying how ill his mother is. And this sort of, you know, her, her line, I, I think, excuse me, I think I might get up today. You know, that, that just right there, really, really covers it, really establishes just how bad off she is, and, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I personally don't, don't think that she will be getting, getting up. I think it is that sort of refusal to accept that and, and it's because her son is there, suddenly her son is there, and it, it is true that she hasn't been able to get out of bed for a long time. And now with her son there, maybe she does genuinely believe it to some extent, but it's maybe also to, to cheer him up, to, to tell him, don't worry about me, I'm just glad you're here. And the father with wanting him to wear the uniform and his father and and friends talking about the war as if they know that that is admittedly also at least partially better or there are, there are aspects of it that are better in the original the the sort of dressing down of Paul's knowledge of the war is admittedly better. And Paul's letter to his mother that she will never read, as he tears it up at the end, with the description, these, the, this is no longer my home, this, and my, my real family, my, my only real truth now, are my comrades at the front, you know, the, 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 we don't discuss 
the meaning of life because to us there is no meaning of life. You know, it's it's war has taken them, claimed them. They they are not dead yet, but they might as well be. They will never be able to do anything other than fight the war. The, it it is the that they're broken. They they were broken down so that they could be soldiers and now they can never be rebuilt. It's interesting how different the scene of Paul confronting his teacher is. He you know, he meets up with him after the after a class and he talks to him and in spite of letting him know that several of the boys that you urge to enlist are now dead because of it. He he has little other comment than oh him I didn't think he would enlist. And and there's actually there's there's a touch of pride in in him as that he's he's like ah I did get to him. I did reach him. And he doesn't he doesn't even ask did he Was he very useful at the front? Did he, was he a hero? You know, did he make, did, did he help you make progress? And there is this exchange about how the new class, this, this current class that he's teaching, are struck by defeatism. They, the, the homeland is or, or at least that aspect of it, the, the children are not on fire anymore. They are not as inclined to enlist. And Paul remarks that, so these are not iron youth, these, these will not become iron men. They're just boys. They want to live, laugh, and play. And it's a really powerful way of expressing what this teacher was a big part of taking away from them. Their, their innocence in their lives Again, even if they had survived, for all intents and purposes, their, their lives, maybe not in a physical term, in, in a physical amount of understanding, but they, they will never be the same. And they could have led regular lives if it hadn't been for that. And I find that's very powerful, very very telling and and I find that it's honestly it's it's a better scene in my opinion than in the original I suppose that does more or less cover it Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.